Hi, I'm Bob Curry, and thanks for watching my video. In a bit, I will present and share the to-do list application. First, however, I would like to take a moment to tell you about the application and some background context for the project. Then we'll take a look at a really cool, dynamic, responsive, rich internet application. Then we'll go behind the scenes and take a quick look under the hood at some of the really cool technology that makes it all possible. The to-do list application is a study in responsive web design and rich internet application development, including support for the Web Accessibility Initiative, accessible rich internet applications, standards and best practices for people using assistive technology such as screen readers. In a world where content is accessed on a variety of devices, people have come to expect high-performing applications which optimize their presentation according to the device they are running on and update the information displayed dynamically without refreshing whole pages. In response to this, and in support of my personal development and continuing education, I have been studying responsive web design and rich internet application development, including support for the Web Accessibility Initiative, accessible rich internet applications, standards and best practices for people using assistive technology such as screen readers. I am prepared to give a presentation demonstrating my work and skills and discuss them in depth technically using this to-do list application as an example. The to-do list example application I have developed has been built to provide a client-side MVC interface with HTML5, AngularJS, Bootstrap, jQuery, and JavaScript to server-side ASP.NET MVC and c -sharp. It communicates with the back-end MS SQL Server database using RESTful Web API calls on IIS to deliver JSON data and utilizes Entity Framework and Link to provide application CRUD maintenance functionality. To get started, First, we'll take a look at the above backgrounder links for responsive web design, rich internet application development, and the Web Accessibility Initiative, and then we'll take a look at the actual to-do list application itself. In the future, we'll begin to use and apply the techniques in software development for new and existing applications, and then we'll share our results and experiences. The first backgrounder link for responsive web design navigates us to this Wikipedia page. Responsive web design, RWD, is an approach to web design aimed at crafting sites to provide an optimal viewing experience, easy reading and navigation with a minimum of resizing, panning, and scrolling across a wide range of devices, from desktop computer monitors to tablets to mobile phones. A site designed with RWD adapts the layout to the viewing environment by providing fluid proportion-based grids, flexible images, and CSS free media queries. Rich Internet Application Development A rich internet application, RIA, is a web application that has many of the characteristics of desktop application software. Google Trends shows, as of September 2012, that frameworks based on a plugin are in the process of being replaced by HTML5 with JavaScript-based alternatives. Web Accessibility Initiative, Accessible Rich Internet Applications. It's a technical specification published by the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, that specifies how to increase the accessibility of web pages, in particular, dynamic content and user interface components developed with AJAX, HTML, JavaScript, and related technologies. On the 20th of March, 2014, the specification became a completed W3C recommendation. Web developers increasingly use client-side scripts to create user interface controls that cannot be created with HTML alone. They also use scripts to update sections of a page without requesting a completely new page from a web server. Such techniques on websites are called rich internet applications. These user interface controls and content updates are often not accessible to users with disabilities, especially screen reader users and users who cannot use a mouse or other pointing device. The specification allows web pages or portions of pages to declare themselves as applications rather than as static documents by adding role, property, and state information to dynamic web applications. The specification is intended for use by developers of web applications, web browsers, assistive technologies, and accessibility evaluation tools. The specification describes how to add semantics and other metadata to HTML content in order to make user interface controls and dynamic content more accessible. Let's take a look at the actual to-do list application itself. The to-do list consists of a list of items with a description, a priority, and a due date. I'd like to call your, to your attention the responsive web app application. By that, I mean that it optimizes its presentation according to the device it's running on. For example, on a large desktop, you get a large display, and on a smaller device, such as a mobile phone or a tablet, in the navigation bar, you'll get a drop-down menu control. 
It's also a rich internet application. That means that it updates the information displayed dynamically without refreshing whole pages. You'll note that throughout the remainder of this presentation, we'll remain on index.html. There'll be no round trips to the server. There'll be no postbacks. We won't be requesting any other pages. We'll remain on index.html throughout the entire presentation. Only the views will change dynamically. You can work with the items in the to-do list by searching, to do so, you sort and filter the items. To sort, click on the column headings to sort sending and descending. And to filter, you place the cursor in the search filter text box and type a string. For example, if I type a number four, we'll narrow the list items to only include those items that include a number four in the description. By the time we've typed the second character, we've narrowed the list to a single selection. Let's reset the list and work with a new item of our own. You'll note, to do so, we're going to be clicking on the Add button. We will, however, remain, as a reminder, on the index.html page. Only we'll be going to the New View for adding items. Here we are on the index.html page on the New View. As we enter the information for the description and the due date and the priority, these visual warning indicators will change to reflect the information that we For example, when we provide a description, this warning sign will change to a check mark to indicate that we've provided a description. When we've supplied all of the information, the Add button will become enabled so that we can add our new to-do item. I'll give this item a description of 11.5. That should sequence the item between 11 and 12 in our to-do list when we sort it by description. We'll give it a due date and establish a priority. Add the item to our list and here's our newly added item. Let's say the priority of our item changes. We need to increase it. To do so, we'll need to click on the Edit button Again, as a reminder, we'll stay on index.html, but we'll be going to the edit view. Here we are on the edit view. Let's increase our priority and update our item. Here's our item in the to-do list with our newly revised priority. When we've completed our to-do list item and we need to remove it from the list, we'll be clicking on the delete button. You'll note that when we do, the item will fade from the list and the other items below it will scroll up. In a moment, we'll take a look behind the scenes and under the hood at some the really cool technology that makes all this possible. That concludes this portion of the presentation. Behind the scenes over in index.html, you'll see we define our Angular application by using an ng-app attribute on the HTML tag. We give the ng-app a value of to-do list app. Over in our application script file, we associate to-do list with our Angular module. We also set up some routes for the list view, the new view, and for the edit view. For example, for the edit view, we'll be using the edit controller and we'll be loading to do item details.html for our view template. We also define a resource for our API and we define some controllers a list controller to support the list view, a create controller to support the add view, and an edit controller to support the edit view. Back in index.html, in the head, we declare our script libraries for jQuery, for AngularJS, and for Bootstrap. And here's where we tie in our application script library, app.js. And we also declare some content for Bootstrap, application content 
the Clara Bootstrap viewport, and establish an application title. In the body of index.html, we use a Bootstrap container class to wrap our Angular view in. We specify an ng view attribute on our div tag. This div tag is where we'll load all the markup for each of the views. For our list view, and for our add and our edit views. This is the markup for our list view. And this is the markup for our add and edit view. For example, here's the description. We use an Angular ng class attribute to declaratively bind to bootstrap feedback classes for success, for warning, and for errors. We also have an accessible rich internet application tag. And we also utilize a bootstrap screen reader only tag. Let's take a look at what happens when you click on the Add button on the List view, or, or the Edit button. When you click on the Edit button, an ng-click event goes off, and we execute the Edit to Do item script. If we go back on our in our script file, and we look on our list controller, we can see that for edit to do item, we first obtain the ID of the item being edited, and then we navigate to the edit view. It's that simple to navigate from one view to the next. We simply navigate to the edit view and pass along our to do item ID being edited. Over in the edit view, when you click on the update button, the save to do item event is invoked using an angular ng click event. And if we look over in our app.js file, on our edit controller, we can see that save to do item performs an update API, that's a put against the database. It calls the update function, passing in the ID and the item being edited. And after the item has been saved, we navigate back to the list view. Behind the scenes, in the put API, the put to do item handler is invoked. We pass in the ID and the to do item being edited. And we save our changes to the database. I want to thank you for watching. Have a great day.